This week, we are talking about warehouse performance. Why? Because everybody I talk to seems to be wanting to improve their warehouse performance. Uh, so that's the topic for this week. And John Monk's going to share some great tips with us. So welcome back, John Monk, uh, warehousing specialist here at Logistics Bureau. Hello, Rob. Gee, what Hello, you Bruce. don't know about warehousing is not worth knowing. So um, a <laughs> lot of people... Yeah. Are probably watching this and thinking, how can I get on a journey or a path to actually improve the performance of my warehouse? What have you got for us? What would you suggest? Well, we've done some other videos as, uh, you know, hopefully our clients can um, find them uh, that will sort of incorporate some of the things we're going to talk about in this particular video. Yeah, but... so um, down below the video, in the video description, uh, we'll put some links to recent videos on slotting and... Um, Oh, capacity. So right. those will be so, there for you, but let's so, continue on. So, with this so what we want to talk about in this video is uh, what we call the FACTS uh, approach or FACTS principles. And that's an acronym that stands for uh, FACTS, F for flow. So that's the, we'll call it the optimal flow of product through a warehouse. Uh, that's the travel path. That's how you handle a product. The number of touches that you do every time you touch uh, a pallet or a carton, you're adding cost. Uh, then looking at the access to the pick faces, that they're unfettered, uh, the C is for capacity. So you've got uh, an, the right type of racking and storage systems for the products that you're storing and that it's efficient um, and cost effective. Uh, the T is for the, we call it trace, which is like being able to make sure that your inventory is um, tracked well throughout the warehouse and we've got some um, suggestions that, uh, there later in the video. And finally, and 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 if you like, first and foremost is S is for safety, that you're considering safety in how you're actually operating the warehouse. So the question around, well, what are some things? So we use this uh, approach or these, these principles in terms of how we would uh, either design a warehouse or how we look to improve um, the performance of a warehouse. Now, often with an existing warehouse, one of the things that we highly recommend is a benchmark or an audit of your operations uh, uh, and assess those using the facts model. And once we've you know, looked at the number of touches, looked at the capacity and storage, uh, what are the KPIs then that can help, uh, uh, you know, A, measure how you're currently performing, but B, be able to be used to set targets for the future uh, so that, you know, everyone knows that uh, within the warehouse that these are our targets and that's what we're trying to achieve. Um, and typically that might be um, the pick rate uh, so that, you know, we've got a target for pick rate and uh, depending on your business, you may or may not incentivize, but, you know, incentives don't always have to be monetary. They could be barbecues and, you know, thanks. The other area that, uh, uh, often that we'd say that's in conjunction with that is looking at the standard operating procedures. And I think this is a really uh, interesting thing to just contemplate for a moment is making sure that the uh, warehouse um, operatives, um, associates are actually doing the, the work in a consistent and standard way and following those procedures. Not only does that help support the safety objective, but secondly, uh, I've found that unless you are all doing it the same way, if it comes to continuous improvement, it's very difficult to actually ever improve because everyone has their own way. So having a standard approach, which is very consistent with uh, a lean methodology, is the foundation of actually then improving. So using those KPIs, developing you know where the improvements might be, and then ingraining them within the standard operating procedures. And then lastly, and, and going to those other videos, uh, looking looking at the, the, the optimization of inventory and the optimization of product placement helps support that efficient operation to boost that warehouse performance. Now, one uh, just case study, uh, by example, was that we uh, had a client that um, was measuring their productivity levels. And, and when you actually, when they actually looked at them, there was a huge range across different operators. And all they did was they set a target. And just setting that target created the uh, the challenge that they said to the 
they, they took the average of everyone. So it wasn't about being the best. It was just the average. And they just said, we want everyone to hit the average. Well, what happened was those people below the average uh, lifted their performance to the average. You know what happens then, Rob? Then you create a new average, which is higher. And so it just <laughs> high slowly... tide floats all boats. <laughs> yeah. So they were they were getting, let's call it something like 30 lines per hour as an average. And by the time they finished over six months, they ended up around 60 lines per hour. So oh. it's a very good case of actually having targets um, and making them visible to the the workforce. And uh, as I say, the reward can be uh, a, a number of different areas. It doesn't have to necessarily be monetary, but can just be barbecues. And I've, I've done that um, yeah. many times in different roles I've had over my career. It's interesting that you mentioned that that case study. As you were talking, I, I, I sort of had a flashback to to one which was quite remarkable. Um, and I won't say what industry it was, but mm. um, the managing director was quite concerned about productivity in the warehouse and he thought it could be improved. Um, and they were picking 15 lines an hour. Now, mm. if, you, you know, if you're a warehouse person, you'd go, what? That's shocking. But it was what we would call really ugly product. You know, so it was considered not bad, actually, 15 lines an hour. And in fact, it was a global business and that and Australia was the best out of the whole global business. So they said, you know, we're doing OK. Mm. But it was interesting. We went through that process that you're describing of the sort of the audit and the benchmarks and so on. And I can remember sitting down with the MD saying, you know what the average is in your industry? It's actually closer to 50 lines an hour. And he almost fell off his chair. And um, so it, it was actually a, a two-year program that was put into place. Um, you know, it wasn't sort of too aggressive or anything like that. There was, um, you know, lots of team meetings and how can we improve and take waste out of the process and all that kind of stuff. And gradually they lifted and lifted and lifted. And over two years, they hit 50 lines an hour, which, mm. you know, at the beginning, they thought was absolutely inconceivable. But, you know, I think that's the, the beauty of um, some form of benchmarking. It shows you Absolutely. what's possible like the one minute mile wasn't it it was considered yeah. unbreakable until it was broken and then it got broken so many times in the that's next right few years, until so. people see that something is yeah. actually possible or achievable yeah. they, they don't think it's possible oh well, that's excellent thank thank you again john for some for some good tips and we'll put some video links down below and of course if you need some help with your warehousing we'll put a contact link down there as well but uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time <laughs>